Hey everyone, Phil from Ember Prototypes here. I've had quite a few people ask me in the past about solvent recycling and what we do with all of our IPA waste. Uh, because we go through a lot of SLA prints and as a result, we generate a lot of IPA waste. And there was a point in time where we used to pay a hazardous waste facility to take our isopropyl. Um, until we discovered that they actually just incinerate it, which is insane. So we eventually bought our own solvent recycling system. And at the end of the day, it's cheaper, it's more convenient, and it's better for the environment. So it's really been great for our business. And I know there's a lot of misinformation about how you can actually dispose of or recycle IPA. There are a lot of myths about like leaving it in the sun or just like letting it sit on a table or curing it in your UV oven. Um, from a chemistry standpoint, none of those things work. The only real way to recycle isopropyl is to distill it. Now, I'm sure I'll get a lot of comments saying, hey, but it works for me. I get clean IPA. And the only thing that I will say is that in the future, I hope to make a video kind of diving deeper into that. As far as I know, the best way to tell if your IPA is actually fresh is to measure the density. And so I would love to do some actual real scientific comparisons and show some of those conclusions. But from what I understand, if you are leaving IPA out in the sun and you think that it's getting recycled, one of two things is probably happening. One is that the pigment in your resin is actually what is settling to the bottom of your tank. It's not actually the monomers that get dissolved by the isopropyl. And the second thing might just be that your isopropyl is so saturated already that the IPA can't dissolve any of the, the monomers. So those excess bits are the ones that are getting cured and solidifying. But anyways, that's a bit off topic. What I want to show in today's video is basically how we use the salt and recycler, just kind of the steps of how to operate it um, and give you a glimpse of what it's like to actually run one of these machines. We are using a Uniram URS 500. Uh, its capacity is around 20 liters or so. And hopefully it'll be interesting for everybody to see how real solvent recycling works, as well as maybe motivate some of you who are operating a business to actually invest in one of these for your bottom line, but also for the environment. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing that you need to make sure is that you uh, have the appropriate PPE. So we're using a respirator from 3M. I'll drop a link to the parts in the description below. Safety glasses for the fumes from IPA. And we've got a nice long battery powered high flow pump that we use to transfer all the IPA. So once you're all gowned up, this is basically the first step for using the solvent recycler. There's an internal bag that all the solvent gets poured into, and then once the solvent boils off, all the junk is left in the bag, and then you can just throw the bag away. So it's extremely convenient. It just gets placed into the tank, and there's a retaining ring that kind of clips it into place. You just pack it down. Then the next step is to make sure that you have a receiving container or pail at the bottom. So once that's all set up, then I'll use the battery powered pump and I'll just stick it into a tank and then connect it onto the solvent recycler and just turn it on and let it do its thing. The nice thing about 
this pump is it's pretty high flow but also it's got a very long hose so for us we don't have to ever move or carry the wash stations full of IPA around because they're quite heavy. The other nice thing about these pumps is that they have an auto off function. There's actually a sensor on the other end of it and once liquid touches that sensor it'll automatically stop. So once the solvent recycler is all filled up we take it out of the wash station and we just make sure that the hose gets emptied of any IPA that's left in it. That wash tank that you see on the right is actually for our Form 3L. So there's around 40 liters or so of IPA that goes in there. So we actually need to run this recycling process twice in order to fully recycle what's in that wash tank. So once all the IPA has been transferred over, we just close it. There's a latch, there's an O-ring, and it's set to a specific temperature for isopropyl, and then you just hit start. So basically, here I am coming back to it the next day. Uh, recycling cycles take around six to eight hours, I believe. So it's usually just a day or overnight thing. And you take the bag out and you can see that there's no more liquid in the bag, but there's all this junk that's essentially the monomers that are left over after the distillation process. So basically after you boil away all the IPA into vapor and then condense it back down into a liquid, that's what you're left with. So I usually always just clean the tank inside before fitting it with another bag. So as I mentioned before, we have to do this twice. So I just gave the tank a quick wipe and then I am putting the second bag inside the recycler so that we can recycle the last half of what's in the wash station. So again, empty bag, retaining ring, just clip it into place, pretty straightforward. So once that's done, then I'm just repeating the process with the transfer pump. And again, once it's full, just close the machine. And before we hit cycle start, we'll actually pull out the recycled fresh IPA from the previous run, and then replace it with an empty pail at the bottom so that our next run can condense down and fill up that container. Now, while the second cycle is happening, we'll use this opportunity to just clean our wash station. Different resins leave different types of residue, and it's always nice to just give it a wipe while it's empty. Once that's done, we'll just put it back into its location. So our wash tank sits on four individual medic stirs, and the whole thing is inside of a grow tent, as you've seen. Once it's back in its spot, we will use the same pump to transfer the fresh IPA. And we'll have to repeat this process twice because this is just the first half of the fresh IPA that's been recycled. So once the pump has transferred 
all that it can from the container will just make sure all the IP and hose has been poured out and then we'll just kind of wrap it up and put it aside on the bench. And then we'll just pour the rest of the IP in the container back into the wash station. And we'll basically just repeat this process for the second recycling cycle once that's complete. Now, once the wash station has been completely full, this is what the fresh IPA looks like. You can see the magnets underneath. So it's nice and clean. We also have two smaller wash stations that we recycle as well. And we just kind of do the exact same process with those. Okay, so that's what it's like to use a solvent recycling system. Uh, like I said earlier, having this distiller here just has been phenomenal. It's just so much more convenient. We don't have to buy IPA all the time. We also don't feel bad about sending it somewhere or rather paying somebody to take it and then just burn it. So highly recommend getting one of these if you're a business and you go through a lot of isopropyl because you're doing a lot of SLA prints. If you like this video or found it interesting, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next video.